Ultimately, they will not become leaders in Eretz Yisrael. What we just said last, nothing related to the coffee, what we just said last is the perspective of the Zohar, that once they saw these great giants, Canaanites, their belief diminished, and they purposely brought back gigantic fruits without saying a word. Let the people understand that just like the fruits are gigantic, so, so too the people are, are gigantic. They strategically painted a picture by using superlatives. Gedolot, me'od, efes, those three key words we studied yesterday. The, the text in a very good manner, my humble opinion. And they painted a picture that Eretz Yisrael is, cannot be penetrated. Unpen, un, unpena, unpenetrable. Unpenetrable. If there isn't a word, we just created it. <laughs> uh, what did it lead to? It led to an argument. Because once a fearless Jew called Kalei from the tribe of Yehuda, he was not willing to go with this, and he immediately tried to quiet them down. One against nine, one against ten. Yeshua was somewhere on the sidelines, we don't know. That's not the point. But you, Kalev stood up <laughs> fearlessly like a roaring lion, and he said, Alone Aleh, we're going to go up, we're going to do it, we can conquer it. And then we heard further lack of belief on the side of these Gedolim, these ten Gedolim Jews, that if we go up, we're going to, we, they're, they're stronger than us, they might have even been stronger than him, and that led to part two of the sin, which we called in Hebrew in the text, Hotza'at. It's on your sheet. Hotza'at. I have patience. I can wait. Hotza'at. Put it on the board. We mentioned it yesterday. Uh, don't tell me, Shani. I'll wait. Come on, Malti. Don't let me wait such a long time. Hotza'at. D. Diba. Diba. Diba is Dibur Ra. And we said Hotza'at Diba is lying. Not just giving. It's a false report. And they said, quote, Eretz Ochelet Yoshvehai. This land devours its inhabitants. By lying, they went up to a more severe sin. They supplied data, which is worse than the original data, incorrect data, that this land kills people. We know it's not correct. We know from the report 40 years later that Yehoshua gets from his two spies that the country is filled with people. People are not dying. The Canaanites are so much in number the Yoshua's two spies that he sent, that they're innumerous. They're so numerous like the sand of the sea. And therefore, the real punishment that's coming up, we're going to learn today, is coming up because of the lie called Hotza'at Diba. So, in two sentences, I want to recap. Their lack of belief in God and their lack of belief in the value of this land of Israel, that they thought, you know, we can go to Uganda, we can replace the land of Israel by staying in the desert, we'll be on a spiritual high, you know, this IV of man and water all the time, no sweating, no working, just sit there and bake and learn Torah all the day and night. That is their plan that eventually led to a worse sin, which we said is lying. And therefore, we'll understand in a moment why their sin is so severe. Then we learned the cause and effect. The cause and effect, what, yes, sir, what do you want to, say? What do you want to ask? It, it, my question was, you, you mentioned the sin of lying. I think it was the bad, more like bad words about like, like saying bad about the land than just lying, or it's like... Okay, first, that I think they're together. 
there is a lack of faith that we can conquer the land. We don't need the land. And now the land kills its people. That's terrible. That's lying, though. They saw some funerals here and there. But you can't survive in this land. The land kills its inhabitants. That's lying about the land. There are people over the ages that we shouldn't come up to El- Why? We won't be religious anymore. The land's going to kill us spiritually. Come on, come up here and live your religious life and join and be partners. There are some uh, Jews in America and others, groups, no, we don't want to come up here. Why? Well, we're, gonna, we're not going to survive here spiritually. What do you mean? Come here and add Torah. Come here and add sanctity to the land. Wouldn't that be Lashon Hara? Of course, they spoke Lashon Hara, but lying in addition about the land. Absolutely. Okay. My dear friends, we saw how this led to a chain reaction that even the Eda, the groups of courts, judges, they cried and they caused others to cry that night as chapter 13 or 14 began. And we said that night was what calendar date according to the oral Torah? Tisha B'Av. That seems to be a date in our Hebrew calendar that's earmarked for disaster. It's earmarked for disaster and then groups start saying, well, we need a, we need plan B. Maybe we should go back to Mitzrayim. Maybe we should appoint another leader instead of Moshe. And when this happens, and more and more people after a night's sleep are complaining, and here you have, we're parked in the desert, and who knows, thousands or tens of thousands crying, looking for an alternative that causes so much distraught, so much sorrow to Moshe and Aaron, what do Moshe and Aaron do? They fall on their faces. And how do Yoshua and Kalev share the agony? What do they do? They, they, say that... they rent their clothing. In Hebrew, what's the word to, to tear your clothing? Do you remember the word? In Hebrew? No. I got you <laughs> Kriya with an ayin. Kriya. Yeah. They rent their clothing. Likra. 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 With an ayin, sir. Uh-huh. Likra. Not likra to read with an aleph. Likra. Cry you... Elohe, Elohecha. There's a lot, there's That's a lot. to call. To call. With ah. an aleph. Is this no... is with an ayin. Uh-huh. Okay? Likra. To tear. So Yoshua and Kalev rent their clothing and they say, this land that we're going to want to go to, Tova Haaretz Me'od Me'od Tova Haaretz Me'od Me'od Tova Haaretz Me'od Me'od Wow. Now, Yosh- who said these words? Yoshua and Kalev. This land has two goodnesses. Me'od, me'od. It's good in this world, and it's good in the future world. It's good in the material world, and it's good in the spiritual. The material world in Eretz Yisrael is holiness. Unlike all over the world where we have a battle between the material and the spiritual, in the land of Israel, sanitation workers are doing a holy job. You're working for the electric company, you're settling the land. You're paving roads, you're settling the land. All things that are related to the material world in Eretz Yisrael can receive holiness. As Rav Kook writes, HaKidusha Shabbateva, holiness in nature. And therefore, we see a new spirit, not a new spirit, we see a real great spirit of Yoshua and Kalev. And that's where we're up to right now, my dear friends. Pasuk Chet, verse 8 of chapter 14. Chapter 14, verse 8. Let's now begin. Please have the place. Im chafetz banu Hashem. If God desires in us. Ve'viotanu el aretz azot. And He brings us to this land. Unitanal. And He delivers it to us. That's it. He's going to deliver. Eretz asharizavat chalav udvash. Number one, economically, it's so viable. The fruits. The milk. The flowingness. That's from an economic point of view. And you're afraid from a security point of view? They continue. 
Yoshua and Kalev to speak in verse 9. Ach! However, if we're going to go in, Bahashem al Timrod, don't rebel against God. They're talking about their inability that God can't help us overcome the enemies. That's, that's not true. That's false. It's a lack of faith in God, a lack of understanding and value. This land God wants to give us. But from a, from a point of view of faith, don't rebel against God. Viatem, and you. Al, look, now I'm going to pronounce the next word. Al tireu. Do you see the vertical line under the tuff? Mm -hmm. That's telling us the following. That's telling us the following. The reason. Exaggerating, but I want to give it to you. This vertical line is here. Is to say that this word is from the word year a. Ah. This line separates one consonant from another consonant. If you would have read it regular in your your Hebrew is limited, you would say the word al tiru from the word lir ot, which means. I didn't say li wrote, I said li wrote. You might think it means to see. But since this vertical line appears here, it's as if it's putting a separation between the tough and this, and therefore you know it comes from the word year a, fear. Year a, fear. Don't have fear. From who? Et am haaretz. Notice Yeshua and Kalev do not call these people giants or the children of giants or strong people. They're Amarids. They're the men of the earth. They're regular people. They're not giants or people that are outsized like the, like the deport board. No, they're just regular people. Kilach menu. They're our bread. They're just like bread. They're not considered something strong. We can overtake them. Don't consider them something special. Sar tzilamelem. Whatever shade, whatever protection they had over themselves, it's removed. Why? Because God said so. If God gave us a mitzvah, to, I'm, I'm trying to explain the background. If God gave us a mitzvah to go in and conquer the land, that means it is doable. It doesn't mean we, there, it's in, we can't penetrate into the country. If God says we can do it, we can do it. You have to have belief in Him. They're like bread. They're not like giants. We have a secret weapon called Hashem is with us. Hashem itanu. It says that literally God is with us. Al tiraum. Don't be afraid of them. So, not only are Yeshua and Kalev expressing themselves, they're full of faith, they're full of vigor. They're telling the people, don't be depressed, unencouraged because of the words of these ten gedolim. What is the reaction? Sukyud people here. Vayomru Kolaida. A lot of the groups, including the high members of the courts. Lirgomo Tambavanib! Stone them! Intifada. And then what happens? The curtain falls. It's the end of the play. Uchvod Hashem, the glory of God, near appears. Be Oamoe. In other words, all of a sudden appearing some sort of cloud. Expression, manifestation of Hashem appears right now on the 10th of meeting. I'll call B'nai Yisrael and that will cause fear. They're about to stone Yoshua and Kalev. Something happens. The curtain drops as if. And now we have a stoppage in the Torah. As you see by me, we have now an end of a section. The rest of the line of the Sefer Torah, like it's written in my Chumash, is skipped. It's the end of a section. This is an end of an episode. So let's just sum up. Yoshua and Kalev, two of the twelve, are full of emuna, confidence in God, knowledge that we can do it. And they try to encourage the people economically and security-wise, we can do it. And once they said that, and they're speaking up against the ten, against the groups of judges, against the multitudes that have been crying that we can't do it, and some of them are looking for an alternative to go back to Mitzrayim, they start looking for stones to stone Yoshua and Kalev, which you may. You're heretics. You, what, are you, what are you taught? What are you teaching? And then the curtain falls. Wow. And now, 
before we go to the next passage. And do you, should we put on the air conditioner? Is it too warm here? No. 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 I know that you like it. <laughs> <laughs> he enjoys warm weather. Yes, Mr. Amos. Uh, this is the Am, the 70s, or this is the whole Israel? We, it, it says, Kol Ha'eda. It's a group. It's a group. It's a group. <laughs> how large? How, uh, uh, how many they are? We don't know. But the fact that they want to pick up stones... To stone Yeshua, that means they're determined that this is wrong to go into Eretz Yisrael. Yes. And that we don't want another alternative. We want to go back to Mitzrayim. Wow. What a, what a crisis situation. Could it be the It could be. That question was asked yesterday. And we answered that in spite of the fact that several of the crisis situations of the last portion of the week the Asaf Suf, the Lust, the Mit Oninim, Rashi, the name of Chazal, says they, they were the heir of Rav. Here we don't see that, so we don't know that it is. We don't know that it is. Or if it is, Rashi didn't bring it. What could it be the corrupt family? We don't know that. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't say that. We're ready to go on. Verses 11. L'chaim, l'chaim. Verses 11 and on. And now, Hashem says, the buck is until here. Vayomer Adunai El Moshe Ad Ana Yenatsuni Haamaza Viad Ana Lo Yaminu Vi Becholo Otot Asher Asiti Bikirbo Ana 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 is not Ann Excuse me Lana Tolech Lana Tolech To where Lean Ad Anna, until where will they irritate me? Until what extent, from the word La'an of modern Hebrew, An, it's, it's, it's grammatic, it's uh, literary. Ad Anna, until what level? Ye Na'atsuni, notice the word Nazis in here. Na'atsuni here means rebel against me, irritate me, but not by mere instance, see the word Nazi in there, do you see it? Uh, until will they irritate or rebel against me? Ve'ad'ana lo yaminu To what extent will they not have belief in me? Bechol ha'otan, I did so many wonders, miracles, bekirbo, amidst this nation. This is the nation that saw the exodus of Egypt. This is the nation that saw the splitting of the sea. This is the nation that saw the dying of the Egyptian army. This is the nation that's been seeing the man coming down all the time. This is the nation that's been seeing the, the, the well, the stone of Miriam rolling with them and providing water for millions of people in the desert. You know how, much, you know how, many, you know how many cubes of water that is every day for a few million people? You know what kind of water supply that is? And she has long hair. She wants a shampoo and this and the kids, the babies. But remember,